Hello everyone, this is Data Engineer One, and welcome back to another video on writing data pipelines. If you're new to the channel, this channel is set up to help data engineers and data scientists write better data pipelines. And in this series, Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro, we write data pipelines with Kedro. We cover advanced and beginner features that Kedro supports. In today's video, we're going to be covering writing custom versioned data sets. So we have a video previously where we covered how to write custom data sets. These are data sets that allow you to do custom I.O. operations that are not currently supported by Kedro out of the box. And then we also have another video covering versioning, which is Kedro allows the ability to save different versions of your data. Um, but the problem is that if you have a custom data set, you actually don't have versioning built in. You have to build versioning yourself. And so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. All right, let's go ahead and start ASCII Cinema. And then we'll start a TBOX session. I've already created a new data pipeline for Kedro called Kedro Versioned Datasets. And inside of this, I've already added a base configuration file from the catalog, this little thing called uh, my data set. Uh, and the type is this Kedro version data set IO, my version data set. So what we're going to be doing today is implementing this my version data set. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be adding here is the file path. And the file path is going to be inside of here, raw um, you know, version data. And then we're also going to have a versioned true. And so this is going to tell Kedro that we want to use the versioned version of this data set. All right, let's go ahead and move into writing the code. So underneath Kedro version data sets, io.py, this is the standard place where we put our custom data sets. I have here my version data set. So the difference between a version data set and a, and a normal data set is this um, super class. So the version data set actually pulls from this version data set, abstract version data set super class, um, uh, super class versus uh, a normal data set would actually, which actually pulls from the abstract data set. Um, abstract data set actually is also still the super class of abstract version data set. So it's actually not too different. Um, in order to use a version data set, um, of course, you have to define your initialization function. And for our, in our case, we can, we are actually using file path, um, which is a string as well as version. And so this one's interesting in that we're not actually copying directly the parameters from the configuration catalog, um, but rather we have this thing called version optional version. And so what this is, is a, parameter which is injected by the Kedro context upon load. So what happens is the context looks uh, for your data set and it says, okay, this data set is a versioned data set. So if that's the case, um, make sure that I pass in a version that this data set is going to use. Uh, and so this is, this, is the, this is made this way because it allows you to pass in um, particular versions on load time. So I think inside of that versioning video, we have um, a, an ability, or rather we, we, we show off the ability to use a version parameter to specify the exact version of the data set that we want to use. Um, I'm sorry, the exact version of the data for that data set that we want to use. Version comes from Kedro IO, uh, and then that optional comes from typing. Okay, great. So we have self, file path, and then the version. Um, then what we want to do is we want to call the super to initialize the uh, abstract version data set, the, uh, the original, the actual um, super class. We pass in the file path, but we actually have to use a pure path. So this is a requirement from, um, I'm sorry, we actually don't need to use a pure path, but we need to use a path. Uh, this is a path object that comes from pathlib. And this is what is required for um, version data set to work. Then we can also pass in the version itself. OK, so that's all you need to do in order to set up your first, um, your, 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 your my version data set. 
um, then we just need to make sure that we add in the save and load features. So let's pretend that you know, rather than like a pandas df, we're actually just going to take uh, a string as a value here. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be writing it out as a text file. So this save function, normally what you would do is you would do um, with open, um, and then you have your file path, self.filePath, uh, which is actually specified not inside of R init, but inside of the abstract version dataset init. Um, you would open that file path, you know, a, a write, uh, and then as F, and then you would do write for that data. Um, however, the way that versioning works in Kedro is that it actually creates a new folder for you. So what it's going to do instead is it's going to create a folder that you're going to save this version underneath. And that folder is going to be the version um, of the data set that uh, we are saving currently. And so in this case, what we're going to be using is we actually want to use this built-in function called get save path. So this is the actual path is equal to uh, get save path. And so this will actually return the proper path for that version. Uh, and then what we want to do also is we want to import an OS. And we actually want to create that path. So if that path doesn't exist, we want to do os.makeDERS path exists equals, as it exists, OK is equal to true. This will create the path if it doesn't already exist. Um, and that actually will will need to add in a dir name here because the path will include the, the file name as well. OK, so we're going to be creating the directory for our file path. Um, and if it exists, that's OK. And then we just pass in path right here. And that's it. So now what will happen is the data will come into this version data set. It's going to check what the version path is in particular. And then it will write out directly to that path. And if we want to load, we can just do exactly the same thing. We have a path, and that path is actually going to be get load path. Um, actually, this is a little bit misleading. The, the get save path and get load path actually returns a path um, object very similar to the one that we pass in over here. So we can actually do two things here. We can either call the string on the path function and just set it as string uh, in order to do our make dirs and then our open. Or we can actually take advantage of some of the path properties. And we can say path.parent.maker exist OK, true. And so this is a built-in function, a built-in functionality uh, for the, um, uh, the path object in that you can call the parent of the current path and then directly create uh, the, the directory for that parent, as well as any parents of that path. And so this is actually kind of a cool little uh, feature that is supported by um, this path lib. Uh, and then we can go ahead and call string here, and string here. Uh, now, if we want to load that path, we can easily just use open the string version of the path and then read as f. And then f.read, we're just going to return the entire file. Uh, and then we have our described. Very simple. We just return a dict with the path set as self.filePath. And this will just describe our data set. OK, so that's our data set there. Let's go ahead and create some simple nodes for this pipeline. We're going to go over here. And then we're going to create um, a very simple, very simple pipeline. We don't even have to create uh, a brand new node. We're just going to create a, a node right here with a function that just says output some text. Right? And this is going to be our node function. It takes no parameters as input. And then we're just going to output um, hello world as the return for this node. And so inside of the pipeline, we're going to create the node, output some text. Inputs are going to be none. We don't have any inputs, but the outputs are going to be our my data set, my data set. And I believe that's the name, unless I named it my version data set. Let's just double check really quickly. 
and here it is my data set. So what's going to happen is that this node is going to be called, which creates, um, which basically outputs a little bit of text, and that text is going to be directly read by our data set and then saved into a file. But that file is going to be a version file. So let's go ahead and save this after we import node. OK, so we import node here. We output some text. Let's go ahead and run the pipeline. So we're going to create a new Tmux window. We're going to type in Kedro run. And it should be OK. Let's see if we made any mistakes. Kedro run is still going through, and there it goes. Now, if we go into our data, 01 raw, we'll see, aha, version data. That was the file path that we made for our data set. Um, normally, when you choose a file path, though, it'll actually save the data directly to that file path. But with a version data set, um, we actually create a new, a new folder with the file and then the date time of the run. And so that counts as the version is the date time. And so if we look inside of here, we can see our version data. If we can't version data, we can see hello world. Uh, if we go back over here and if we change up this, this data, we can say hello world 2. Or maybe we can actually say good night moon like this. If we rerun the pipeline, CD, we can rerun the pipeline, we'll see that inside of our data, inside of version data, we actually have two versions now. And so the most recent one is our new version data. And if you cat this new version of the data, we can say cat, it'll say hello world. Oops, I'm sorry, I catted the wrong one. Um, if we cat the new version, not the old version, we will see good night moon. Okay, and so that's about it for uh, custom version data sets. Uh, there's a little bit more advanced functionality that you can go into, which we'll probably cover in another video. Um, but basically, you can use um, custom uh, glob functions as well as custom uh, exists functions in order to support uh, custom uh, non-standard or rather non-local uh, file paths or non-standard file paths. Okay, well, that's it for today. I hope you guys learned something. and uh, Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. If you, and <laughs> don't forget, if you like this video, just button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.